I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to access pages and create a brochure for your ninth grade humanities project. The first thing that you need to do is locate pages and most students computers do not have it in the dock on your computer. There are two ways that you can locate your pages. First you can go to your launch pad and that's the little symbol that looks like a spaceship and when you go to your launch pad, everything will open that you have access to. And Pages is going to look like an inkwell right over here on the right hand side. You'll see it. If you don't want to use your launch pad, you can also go to the uh, little magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner of your computer screen. And here you can just simply type in Pages and you can access your pages there as well. When you open your pages document, you'll have several different choices. Um, now some of you may not get the template chooser the way that I just got it on the screen. And if that happens, you simply go up under file and you'll want to create a new document from the template chooser. And um, it's simple. You'll get the screen that I have in, in front of you now. This is our template chooser and if you've never used pages, I'm just going to take a minute to show you. You can do something on a blank sheet of paper. There are different letter formats. If you need a resume format, there's one there. You can also do newsletters and flyers and posters. If you want to have a card for a party, you can create cards. But for this project, you're using brochures. So you're going to click on the word brochure and when the brochure is open you'll see that you have several different options. For your humanities project you need to choose one of the landscape brochures or what we call horizontal. It's going on a horizontal plane rather than like this one which is vertical. It's going up and down. So once you've seen that we have several of the brochures that are either landscape or what we call horizontal, then you'll see that there are several that have three columns. If you look at this one, as soon as it opens, it has three different columns that you can put information in. These typically work the best for the project that you're working on, so I'm actually going to use this one as my example. The wonderful thing about Pages is once you have chosen the template that you're going to use, it's super simple to add information. All you need to do is decide where you want your information to go, what information you want to put on here, and then you start typing away. What you're going to see is on this side we have two different we have one column but there are two different um, colors. The first one is sort of like a heading or a subheading and so let's say you're writing about Japan and at this point you want to put in Japan culture. It's going to keep the text in black and it's going to keep it in the same font that was there. Now if you don't like the font, you want to change it or you want to change the side size, you simply highlight it and you'll see up here that you can change the font type. You can make it bold or you can make it something different. You can also change the size if you want to do that. And you can also change the color. Here's what I'm going to tell you about colors though. Unless your teachers are printing this in a, on a color printer, this will be black and white if you print it. So at this point, make sure that you know if you're printing in color or black and white. That's going to make a difference in how this will ultimately look. If you're just leaving it in color and attaching it to an email to your teachers, then I would worry about the color, what it's going to look like. If they're going to print it for you, then you want to make sure that it's going to print in such a way that the black and white appears um, properly on the page. So you can change the color so you can play with that. But then, once you've decided on, let's say, the subheading, then all you do is you highlight the next section and you start typing.
simple as that. So you can type right here on the text. You can also copy and paste. So if you want to type your text in um, Google Docs or on Microsoft Word, you could do that. If you found that um, you didn't have enough room for your information, again, you just highlight it and you can go back and change the font so everything fits on the screen. Now over here, for example, you'll see that the font is really small. It's actually an eight font. So if you wanted, you could make it larger so that it's easier to see. So the text is super easy to um, change, to add to, to alter, and it's just like Microsoft Word in a lot of ways that you can use all of these things up here in your toolbar to fix it. The second thing that you're going to want to have, though, um, will be your images. And again, images are super easy to use on pages, and I'm just going to give you an example of a couple of them, and a couple of the problems you might want to run into, is, or you'll run into as well. First thing, we're going to go to Google. We're going to go to Google Images. When we're on Google Images, we're just going to type in the country or whatever it is that you're looking for. So at this point, I just want to do Japan. And I want to find something that's going to go right here in this little picture. Now, a word of warning. If you have a picture like this that's going up and down, you need to find something that goes up and down as well. Because if you don't, let's say I take this image and I try to drag it in here, Look what happens, it cuts it all off. I do not want that. So I want to find an image that's similarly, sh similarly shaped um, to that. So this little girl is like that. I'm going to take her, click on the image, and drag it right over here into pages. Um, I kind of like that, um, but I'm not so sure that I want to do that one. So let me see if I can find something else that I can click and drag in there. Maybe this one. And this one. Oh, that one won't go. There's something odd with that picture. Well, let me try another one. And that one won't go either. See what happened with this picture? I clicked on it and dragged it right over here, just like I did of the one of the little girl. But it didn't go. All I get are these little images, and that sometimes will happen. If it happens to you, you simply go back to your Google image, and we're going to try this a different way. You're going to hover over the image, and on your computer, we have to do a right click. If you've never done a right click, it's simply hold the control button. It's down by your space bar. You hold your control button and then click on your mouse. Hovering over this, you'll get the option to open the link, to copy the image, to view the image. We're going to copy the image. And by copying it, that may allow me to put it over here. We're going to see. If it doesn't, there's another way that we have to do this. So when I come back over here, I'm going to click where I want the image to go. And again, I'm going to right click. Right click means that I hold down the control button and then I click on my mouse. This gives me the option to go ahead and try to paste the image that I just copied from Google. And when I paste it, it works. Some of your images may not copy and paste or you may not be able to simply drag them over onto your pages. If you can't drag it, and if you can't copy and paste it, it is likely a copyrighted picture that you will not be able to use. So in that case, you'll want to go find another picture that you can either click and drag or that you can right click on, copy it, and then paste it into your document. Now, I want to show you something. So let's say I really, really, really want to use this image and I don't want to use this over here. I can go ahead and erase what was already created for me as far as the format goes. And I can change that format. I'll get rid of this. I can change that format just by erasing everything that's there. And then I can add in whatever images I want in any fashion that I want. So let's say rather than having that one big image that was there, I want to have two smaller ones. And if that's the case, I'll copy this. I did, again, by copying, I could control and click on my mouse. And then I can come over here and I can just click and drag whatever I want into that space. 
So a couple of things to remember. The format is here for me to use. So I can simply just add whatever I want and it'll lay out just like Pages has for me here or I can change everything. So again, maybe I want, oh, let's see, maybe I want this image to go right here. I'm going to click on it, I'm going to drag, and it shows up. But again, because of the way that is originally formatted, maybe that doesn't work for me and I don't like the way that looks and I don't want to use any other picture. So I can go back, take all of that out, and change the formatting to make it my own. Again, I'm going to change that by, get this over here, looking at my picture and going, I really want this one. Click it, drag it, and then I can make it the format that I want. So a lot of different choices, but it's super easy to use. First thing you remember, the format is going to stay the same unless you want to alter it. In order to alter it, all you do is click on whatever it is that you want to change. You can delete it or you can type right over the type top of it. So I typed right over the top of it. But if I don't like what's there, I just highlight it and remove it and it's gone. If you want to bring it back, you just go to your undo. and it'll bring it right back just like in Microsoft Word. If you have any questions or issues, pop in and see me and I'll try to help you out.